Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing My Hero Academia Season 5, which is now uh, over on Crunchyroll. It's on Funimation. Probably by the time you watch this back in the future, it'll all be over on Crunchyroll. But yeah, I kind of watched this a while ago, wanted to review it. It's been a while. I'm going to be reviewing the others to kind of catch up, but I wanted to talk about Season 5 because it's the most recent one. So yeah, let's jump into it. I did enjoy some of the story arc. I thought it went back into the past storylines, but hid them as new ones I, I have no idea why i wrote that i think when watching this it's just you've seen what all the kids can do you can see that all the students of ua high have the ability to either mess shit up as in not like mess things up but wreck people as well as save people but it feels like every single time that the teachers treat them like kids like 100 and it slowly annoys me and i can say i can understand that they're still learning but you've had them take and fight main bad guys uh, main bad guys that are super heroes that the soup the main pros can't even deal with so seeing that kind of like a razor head like stop it and stuff like that and be like you stay back like you can't do this really irritated me to the point where i was just like the kids could just leave and beat the shit out of anyone that they wanted to or train under heroes and get that license but i just felt like it annoyed me it, it really fucking did so there were i think three main story arcs in this it was versus class b endeavor stuff and then villains arc i think the one thing that annoyed me the most probably was the versus uh class b because i i think i skipped one or two episodes because i wasn't really that bothered and with endeavor i was all right with i thought it was okay and then learning about one of the villains having you know the villain storyline worked quite well which i enjoyed more because it actually led somewhere rather than it being quite boring so with class uh with Class A versus B, it, as I've written here, it's annoyed me a little. Uh, most was fine, but I wanted better results. And I think it's just because either some was o some were over really quickly. So the, the best one that I would probably would say would be the one with Bakugo. It was his team that they all worked perfectly. And you saw more character development in him, which I really liked. I, I felt like that was the best one that they've done. Even when they had Deku and they had characters that didn't work well together, I felt like it was just a tad bit boring. Like the first one where you had the guy who can control people and you had him like kind of learning about his powers, about learning with people, that was kind of good. But I think majority of it, I got bored and it just, it, it felt like something that they could have easily have done to show quicker. So you could have had like, oh, here are the main two or the main three that we're doing. The others were like this and it was absolutely fine for what it was. I think I just wanted it to be over and done with to, to go into the better stories. I think that was what I kind of wanted rather than stick about and kind of do nothing. I'm liking it was a mixture. So it wasn't just, how do I say, like it wasn't just class A constantly winning all the time. So having a mixture felt like there was some stuff going on and that was okay. But personally, we all know that class A was going to win properly. I think the main thing that kind of makes things better is Deku and him having his new ability where he's able to like use it as a whip and stuff like that and then finding out more about that power later on that I did kind of like but it just felt like there was danger but I would have preferred it being used a lot more rather than just like say one episode and it's like oh my god what are we gonna do I feel like there was more in depth that you could have learned and I felt like they didn't really kind of touch it that much it was just here's a little thing going on you know of the power he's able to kind of learn about it later and it starts from like say something small to something big i felt like there could have been a bit more to it that he could have learned to use his power properly in this season rather than possibly we're gonna have to wait till season six i hated momo's fight her team she is the best girl in this series but i generally just hated her entire whole fight with everyone it just felt felt weird like they weren't working together and then when they got beaten i was just like oh Cool, all right, that's done. I can easily finish that one. As I said with Deku, I felt his power wasn't that great. It, there wasn't any dangerous. It looked like there was, but I don't think there was any danger. It gets to the point where he doesn't want to use his quirk and he says, I'm not gonna use it. And then five seconds later, uses it. And I was just like, oh, come on, Deku. It, like I could understand if this was like very early on and he's like, I don't want to use it. But the fact is he's been using his quirk for some time. He could have easily have used it all the time and not used that particular one. But to me, I just felt like it was absolutely fucking pointless. 
I don't like it when Deku goes, I'm not going to use my power. And then he fucking uses it. Or he wants to give it away because he doesn't think he's worthy of it. It, it fucking irritates me on like so many fucking levels. There's a guy in it. I can't remember his name at the moment. But he's always boasting, going, I'm going to destroy you, Class A. You're going to be shit and I fucking hate you. And I'm like, fuck off. I hate this sort of mentality in this because he's going around saying like, oh, we're going to destroy you. It's like, I just want to punch him in the face. If I had Deku's quirk, I would go full on power, even if it was shattering my hand and just punch him and knock him out and be like, do you see this fucking power that I've got? Go fuck yourself. Oh, he's one character that I fucking hate and he always comes up. And then as soon as he gets beaten, he's like, oh, class B, no, class A, class A. Ooh. And it's just like, shut the fuck up. Even your classmates are telling you, to shut the fuck up. It irritates me. It fucking doesn't need to be in there. We then switch into the Endeavor arc where they, they're gonna go train with Endeavor because there's a whole thing coming up. I, I generally really like this story because there was a lot of character development. Even when you saw Todoroki, Bakugo, and Deku actually all work together, I felt like it was the, the strongest three in the class. And I like the way that they, they generally work together, that they knew what was going on and it wasn't kind of a, oh, like we don't know each other's powers. They all worked perfectly. And we've seen this happen before previously in other seasons where they all know exactly what they're doing. And I felt like that was a fantastic thing. It gets to the point where because there was enough in this to actually be decent, it wasn't long or, or drawn out. It was literally, this is what's going on. This is how it's working. This is what we want to do. And that to me was fine. I loved also the driver who has a go back at Bakugou completely. He's just like giving him lip and then he's just giving it lip back. Oh, lame! Why doesn't the number one hero have a bigger car oh great the brat's not happy with his free ride what an aggressive driver thought that was absolutely perfect it, it felt like i would like to see this a bit more rather than it just not happening so i kind of want to see this a bit more in the future people having to go back and go because it was fun i generally really enjoyed that part the villains arc i think out of all of this is the best one that they've done because it felt like you were getting to know the villains rather than just generic villains that come and go you saw it and it is tomaru or tomara his storyline was fantastic i felt really like oh, sorry for him and what he did and his ability to kind of when he touches stuff it all disintegrates and to see the fact that when he's growing up he doesn't know that he's got this power and where his dad hates Hates him or, or doesn't like him but when he like kind of like when his sister sees what happens to this dog she gets fucking like annoyed and she runs away and as he touches her on the back or tries to grab her she disintegrates and i don't know if the mum sees it or something but seeing that i was like holy fucking shit and then as soon as like he then does the same thing to his, his i think his grandparents or his mum again i was just like what the hell and his dad saw it as well all of them just get disintegrated and rather than the, the kid going like oh my god like ah, he's like starts laughing and i was just like holy crap they knew what they were doing and that was such a shocking thing i didn't know how to kind of process that when i saw it i i just thought do you know what that's fucking cool oh dear boy was i was just like holy shit but i liked it i liked the fact that you saw this storyline and it wasn't just a generic oh i'm evil because i have this power and i want to be evil you saw how he was when he was a, a kid like also seeing toga using the, her abilities properly where she's able now like using aruka's power where she can make people float and the fact is that when they all get ambushed in this small city what it is that she's able to move really quickly touch everybody send them up and then release them to kill them and it's not just like a release where they, they fall down it's like you just hit the floor i love toga's power and that to me was fucking fantastic like i really really enjoyed this and i felt like it worked quite well you also had the doctor the doctor in this was evil he took quirks and stuff like that from other people and then gave them to all for one seeing how he was putting it into no mode but how he was doing that how he's absorbing powers and then feeding it back to the main bad guy i love this and how the fact that he wouldn't help the villains not unless they did something it just felt like the story the villains was more thought out than the the generic stuff with deku and his classmates i think that's what made the anime for me because i really enjoyed it i felt like this was fantastic i didn't get bored i got bored at the very beginning but through the villain arc never got bored and i wanted more and i love the fact that you saw these guys 
even when it was like this big mob boss at the end you, you know try and get through and use his powers i fucking loved it you saw how he went from i'm a mob boss to the fact that he now became their lackey tomara can't say his name toma but seeing him become the main like the main boss sparked like i wanted to see season six i want to know what happened and i loved it the season wasn't too bad the ending was better than the beginning as i said i got bored but i absolutely love the last part but yeah i'm gonna leave it there this one is definitely worth picking up if you're collecting all of them like i am doing then i highly recommend it link is going to be in the description um below if you want to pick it up but if not and you just want to stream it then it's going to be on crunchyroll highly recommend it. what did you think of my hero academia what was your favorite moment did you like the storylines and if not let me know down below in the comments and if you like this sort of content and you want to hear and see more hit that like button hit subscribe check out the merch and all that lovely stuff and with that i'm gonna leave it there thank you very much for watching and if i don't see you tomorrow I'll see you in a couple of days. Channel support, you